Hello, Dom here. Now, what if you could see with your tongue or hear with your skin? Sounds stupid, but it's real. The human brain is a flexible thing, and I don't just mean metaphorically. As we learn a new skill, like a new language or playing an instrument, the brain needs to activate various different areas. It fires millions of neurons, making up neural pathways that combine processes like motor function, audio, visual, and verbal language skills to result in the desired application. Like playing a G chord on a guitar while I'm telling you I'm playing a G chord on a guitar. Now, this might not be easy at first, but as you practice, your brain optimizes, creating new neural pathways, improving the processing of that task, making you better at it. This flexible feature of our brains is called neuroplasticity. It's an incredibly important and ongoing process. It allows us to adapt to our environments and physiological changes. Put simply, it gives us the ability to learn new skills. Now, your brain has about 100 billion brain cells. These cells connect in different configurations depending on what processes they are involved in. Now, the connections that link these cells are called synapses. And young children's brains have around twice as many of these synapses than adults, which which has led researchers to believe that the adult brain isn't nearly as flexible as that of a child. However, new research is proving otherwise. For example, London taxi drivers spend around two years learning all the highways and byways of the city's maze of streets. And in subjects who passed the exams, researchers observed a sizable increase in the posterior hippocampus the part of the brain crucial for navigation. Proof that adult brains are still capable of substantial rewiring. Researchers have also found that parts of the brain associated with specific tasks can also take on other roles when necessary. For example, the optical lobe is the part of the brain that usually takes on the role of processing the visual stimuli. But in blind people, the brain can use this area to add to its auditory processing instead. And stroke victims have re gain skills as their brains find new pathways using completely different areas to process information. So how can we make even more use of this awesome feature? Well, sensory substitution is the technique for circumventing the loss of one sense by feeding information through another channel. Take for example, the BrainPod V100. Developed for blind people, the user wears a pair of glasses with a camera mounted on the front. The software converts the visual information into data that is fed into a plastic feeler inserted under the user's tongue, covered with electrodes which impart electrical pulses to the tongue in various patterns based on the visual information coming from the camera. With some training, users have been able to recognize different letters, numbers, shapes, and even navigate quite complex obstacle courses. And fun fact, fun fact, scientists have found that your tongue isn't the only part of your body that can taste things. You actually have taste receptors in your stomach and in your intestines, your pancreas, your lungs, your brain, even your anus and testicles. Yummy. Another example of sensory substitution technology is VEST, or Versatile Extrasensory Transducer, created by David Eagleman and Scott Novick. The user wears a simple vest with motor pads attached in the back. The vest picks up sound using a microphone or a smartphone, and those sounds are then converted into signals that control motor pads, which vibrate in certain patterns depending on the sound's frequencies. With training, users have been able to interpret words and sounds through their skin. And so the inventors of VEST are trying out different and unusual experiments, pushing the limits of what information can be interpreted. One experiment sends stock market data to the VEST. The test subject, completely unaware of the nature of the experiment, picks one of two colors on a tablet, each color representing either buy or sell. Again, the user is completely uninformed about what the colors represent. Now, if the user makes a good decision, they see a smiley face. If they make a bad decision, they see a sad face. The experiment is to see whether over time the user can somehow feel the economic climate and make subconsciously informed decisions. But why stop at wearable tech? Could we upgrade our DNA? Well, in 2007, scientists undertook an incredible experiment. They replaced a gene in mice responsible for their black and white vision with a human gene which allows for color vision. With further experiments, they were able to confirm that the mice were indeed capable of distinguishing color information. Cheese has never looked so good. 
but tampering with human genes is highly controversial. Plus, we've only just scratched the surface with wearables and implants, so there will be many ways that we can add to our sensors before we start messing around with our DNA. Personally, I'm hoping for a device that lets me smell danger from like a mile away. I want to I want to smell if, if someone wants to hit me or sell me like a bad vacuum cleaner, maybe even into the future, like a week away. I want to smell a mile and a week away. That'd be great. I've been Dom and you've been watching everything. <laughs>